Hello everyone, my name is Rhiannon. So as you can see, I am back in my house now. I finished my two weeks isolation coming back from the UK to Singapore. So for today, I thought that I would do a little bit of a review of my first semester at university because the school year just officially finished for us on the 18th of December. However, I finished a bit earlier just because the last two weeks of December are usually for the examination period and just the way my classes were this semester, I didn't follow the normal examination period. So just for the basics, I am studying biomedical sciences at the University of Edinburgh. It is part of the College of Medicine, so it does fall under as a medical degree as opposed to a biology or just a regular science degree, but it is still just a regular um, bachelor's with honours. The degree at Edinburgh is a four-year degree program, which is a bit different than a lot of the other schools in either England or Wales and such, which are only three-year degrees. However, the Edinburgh degree, which is four years, does have the option to do direct second year entry, where you skip the first year of biomedical sciences and go straight into year two. You can only do that if you've scored high enough on either IB, A levels, whatever your incoming um, exams or previous education was. I'm not sure if you can do it with the Scottish system. If you're doing Scottish hires or advanced hires, I believe you have to have done advanced hires in order to do that skipping of the first year, but most people will still choose to do the first year again just because second year entry is obviously you're going in with the year above, which can be a bit difficult socially and also could just potentially be a big jump academically. So even though I met the condition essentially to go into second year entry, I chose to just start um, at the beginning. So I just did the regular first year entry. I have three classes a semester for this first year. This particular year, I don't have any class that carries over from semester one to semester two. I had two mandatory classes and then one um, like elective course. My two mandatory classes were biological chemistry 1A and biomedical sciences 1. <laughs> and then for my elective, they strongly recommended two different science uh, courses. So I took the one called Our Changing World. So Biological Chemistry 1A was very much organic chemistry. However, a lot of it was a review for me because I studied the International Baccalaureate and I took higher level chemistry in the IB. Um, there were definitely like sections of the course that were new to me but overall it was very heavily like organic chemistry and a little bit of we had a unit called biomolecules which is quite biology based and was quite basic there wasn't really a lot of chemistry if you've done any sort of like advanced biology a levels biology ib biology like advanced hires it should be like a review for that as well but in the biological chemistry class i had five different units and each unit was two weeks so I'm not sure how it was done normally but that course was just completely online with the restrictions because of COVID. So it's supposed to be a lab-based class but we did not have any labs in person. Instead we had the unit spread over two weeks and we would have six lectures released the first week with a question and answer session on Friday morning and then the next week would be lab week and tutorial week. So you would have pre-tutorial questions, two sets. One was pre-tutorial one, and then pre-tutorial two, which you would go over in the tutorial, and then post-tutorial questions, which were similar to the exam style questions. And you would have the, that tutorial in week two, and then your lab, which was also done online. So for us, it was a bit of like a simulation and then you would get the lab manual to read and essentially they would give you data that you would then analyze in a really long worksheet that was fully online, you know, a lot of calculations, whatever, all done on that worksheet. And then at the beginning of the next cycle of two weeks, so the beginning of the next week one, you would have a quiz over the previous unit. Those quizzes, there are five of them total because there are five units, were essentially my end of the year exam. They were just spread out during the year, but they were 
30 minutes each and would have been the duration of the final exam, which would have been two and a half hours, 30 minutes for each unit. They were 10 questions each, multiple choice, and they were worth 60% of my overall grade for chemistry. 30% came from the labs that I was discussing. There were five different lab worksheets, one for each unit, although I do believe they take your four best labs and then average the score for that, and that's how you get 30%. And the final 10% came from this program called PeerWise. There's no teachers involved, it's just with the other students in your course. You do the um, make questions, answer other people's questions, you have to interact with one another, rate their questions, comment on the questions, see if you can improve the questions and things like that. And that was worth the final 10% of my grade for chemistry. But yeah, chemistry was extremely, like, you really have to have a lot of um, self-control, a lot of, like, structuring your own course because the course was extremely content heavy and was very rigorous with the cycle of six lectures and then the lab week lecture week and then the exam right there but the course was also really nice in that aspect because you could always monitor your grade and you knew almost immediately the feedback like actually like I think you got the grades immediately for the tests and you got the grades immediately for the labs as soon as you submitted it because it was online and just calculated as you were working so you essentially do know your score in chemistry at the end of the semester the really bad part was the labs of course were online because the labs at Edinburgh are apparently designed to hold around 100 students each but with the social distancing measures they could only fit around 20 but biological chemistry 1a is a mandatory course for everyone in biological sciences everyone in biomedical sciences and everyone in medical sciences so there were around 400 people taking the course which is why the course was fully online and will continue to be online. So for next semester, I have Biological Chemistry 1B, which is a continuation, and they said it will be structured in the exact same way. And then for my other class, I had Biomedical Sciences 1, which was supposed to be an introduction to my major because I'm studying Biomedical Sciences. At Edinburgh, you can split into seven different specialties at the end of year two, or you can just continue a normal Biomedical Sciences unspecialized degree as well. They're all same. They're all honors degrees, and they're all Biomedical Sciences. It's just some are a bit more specialized. And this course was designed to give a bit of an introduction. I found it to be like really easy because it wasn't a science-based course actually it was very much academic skill based so we would have tutorials nearly every week with the same tutorial group and you'd have one lecture a week and then a digital like online discussion that was done on like a discussion board with a separate group to your tutorial group and that was about the lecture the lectures were really interesting done by like tons of different professors none of them were repeated a lot of them were about like research based and they were designed to give you like an idea of the different aspects of biomedical sciences. It's just like the different lecturers could come up with whatever they wanted and then you had the discussion on it. I don't think the discussion was effective at all because there was not a lot of like cross interaction. We were being graded on the discussions. So you would get one point each discussion and you needed to get 10 points total so 10 percent of your grade came from the discussion but it was very like, easy to do you just answer some questions about the lecture post it and then you're done essentially for the week you could literally get it done like when it was released on monday which is you know not exactly like ideal in terms of engagement and then some of the other aspects were like these little tasks on learn learn is the online software that we use a lot of them were very like weird as well they they weren't really like learning they were supposed to be tasks that would teach you about like plagiarism tasks that would teach you about citations tasks that would teach you you know about how to like how to analyze or how to how to structure paragraphs or such but i find they, they didn't really do that and they were only worth like two or three percent each but they were also just worded very weirdly so a lot of times you would do it and you'd be like well why is that the correct answer and they but anyways so that's worth like 15 percent of my grade and i had a big essay that was worth 45 percent of my grade that was only is 1200 words so it was a very very strict word limit and we were randomly assigned topics you essentially were assigned a nobel prize laureate and their nobel prize paper and you essentially just discussed what they did and like why they were awarded the Nobel Prize and um, like why was it important to science and to biomedical sciences. Um, I got Linda Buck and the olfactory receptors so like in your nose but uh, personally I was not interested when I was first assigned the essay because in 
yeah, I I would rather study like pharmacology or infectious disease. But, you know, the essay was quite like genetic based, but it's also a lot of like neurotransmitters and receptors into the brain. So it wasn't just the like it wasn't just in your nose, it's the olfactory system into the brain, which um ended up being like fairly interesting. It wasn't that difficult of an essay to write, but I found when I got my feedback back that it was very like they focused on a lot of like the they focus a lot on like my referencing and my citations which although they were like correctly done a lot of them they were like ooh like this is not the greatest of sources but so there wasn't a lot of feedback i found on my actual like writing itself which i think is quite unfair actually because it was just weirdly done and i didn't find the feedback to be that useful in terms of your own like personal reflection. We also had to write a reflection for BIMED that was worth 15% of our grade on a group project that we did and that was the final final assignment that we had to do. But the group project was done similarly to the essay where you were randomly assigned a group and you were also randomly assigned a topic. I was with three other girls that I had never met before and actually the entire time we did not meet in person. One of the girls who was from Ireland ended up moving back to Ireland but I found the group project was really quite similar because they they gave you a category and they gave a list of questions in each category that you could pick from so we pick um, a question like that was already given to us and it wasn't really that difficult of a question it was really quite a straightforward presentation like you really did just you know it was this, the research was really simple to do really simple to put together and we didn't have to present it in person it was just yeah that was worth the other 20 percent of my grade or such so biomedical sciences was actually graded on a lot of different factors which made the course quite difficult I think to score well in even though I found the course to be quite simple but that was my last mandatory class and then my very last subject my elective was called our changing world which was a very interdisciplinary class you did not have to be a science student taking it but they strongly recommended to biomedical students because the focus of our changing world was actually about the COVID-19 pandemic, where we essentially had different discussions, different topic points that we would write an essay on each week, a mini essay on each week, and then you would then discuss it in a seminar group. And the seminar group was quite small. Mine started originally with six students and then ended up being seven students but most of them were biomedical science students and then one was studying i believe politics so she was doing a humanities course but the rest of us were all studying stem based courses which obviously you know is quite interesting to see because you get a lot of different perspectives i don't really regret taking that course even though it was a lot of research and self-directed learning you were not really given any sort of resources or there were no lectures it was just a lot of reading but it was more just to see everyone's different points and what everyone focused on because the writing piece was 500 to 600 words which is really really brief so you really had to focus on like one aspect even though the prompts were usually quite broad that class also had a group project that was worth 45 percent of my grade and you were assigned groups within the seminar group so we were split into three and four i was in the group of three the other two girls in my group we were all studying biomedical sciences which gives us obviously a bit stronger view of obviously COVID-19 from a science perspective as opposed to the humanities perspective but the group project wanted us to essentially think of how the UK should move forward with policies designing around COVID-19 so it was a little bit of like an imagination scenario but it was quite an interesting group project it was definitely a lot harder than the biomedical sciences group project in the nature of what they wanted you to do the task was a lot more complex because you actually had to produce things yourself there was no like given prompt really you had to design your own questions design your own focus and what you want to focus on in the presentation but I think that group project went really well and we were able to submit it really really early on also because we thought it'd be like the biomed one where you had to submit an audio recording along with the presentation but actually all you had to submit was the presentation and a script and we had written the script to do the audio recording so they were like slightly different but kind of similar in theory in terms of the work that you had to do and then there was a peer review for that as well that was worth the final 10 percent and that was it for our changing world but overall like the experience was definitely like different because I did everything online. Edinburgh did say that it would be a hybrid semester but I didn't find it to be a hybrid semester. 
for me personally, I had some friends studying vet med who did have one day a week on campus. And there were other people who had tutorials or seminars that were on campus, like in person, live. But I unfortunately, just the way my classes were, I had completely nothing in person. And a lot of my stuff was also recorded. So there was no real need for me to be in Edinburgh. I could have just stayed here the entire time. I'd say like socially, it was better to be there, obviously, so you can meet people. Just for me, because I was in, like, I'm in a, like, a residence hall as opposed to a flat. My household's a lot bigger, which is actually harder to meet people. And you don't really meet people because there's no way of forcing you. Like, you're not in the same kitchen. You know, you're not all sharing a bathroom. Like, there's no sense of interaction. And the cafeteria is, we all have to sit, like, on an individual table that's, like, two meters apart from everyone. So it's also very difficult to hold conversations in the cafeteria. So it's also really hard to meet people there and it depends on if you do sports or activities but a lot of the sports and activities were either like limited or online and especially if you do contact sports like there was a period where when Scotland first um, initiated the tiered lockdown system that sports were like completely cancelled for two or three weeks so I didn't actually do any sports or any activity this past semester but I'm hoping to do some in semester two I'm sure that can really influence if you meet people or not but it's very difficult to meet people in my program itself because I didn't have any classes in person and most of my things were recorded so even though, you know, I was able to interact with some of the people in my seminar groups or my tutorial groups, that wasn't really in a non-academic sense. Academically, like, it wasn't necessarily difficult to learn, but it, it was, there was a large impact socially, especially because Scotland, after around Freshers Week and one week of school, like, really started implementing a lot more rules there were a lot more restrictions there were fines in place but the university would also bring in a lot of police and stuff so it became really really difficult to see people even like outside of your particular building so like for us you're not actually allowed to go into any other buildings that's why like i primarily spend a lot of time with my friends who are in my building because we're the only people allowed to interact with one another because we live in the same building Otherwise, it becomes very difficult. Scotland really just, they just implemented tier four lockdown for everyone because England did. So it's a really difficult situation, like COVID wise. I wouldn't say it's been the easiest semester overall, like um, in a non academic sense, just for everything else, like socially and just like lifestyle wise. It's been like a very, you have to be really independent, I've noticed this past semester, just completely because you, like, you just have never seen your teachers face to face. Which, I mean, not everyone can work well with that. I found like it wasn't too bad for me because academically I didn't find it that challenging. But definitely like if you're in a higher year level or if you're in a program that like really, really started, like there were no direct second year entry. As in it was like it just became difficult like from the first year I could definitely imagine that it is a very different scenario but yeah it's been a very interesting experience I don't think it's been the greatest experience the school has a lot of pros and cons they've done some things well they've done some things really poorly but um we will see how it goes for second semester I do have different classes and hopefully I will be able to be in person for some of those or hopefully I can join some activities to meet some new people but yeah that was my experience at the University of Edinburgh for my first semester during COVID. I hope this was useful to some of you guys especially if you're interested in joining biomedical sciences because I do believe it will be the same classes for you if you decide to take biomed and yeah thank you so much.